Assalamu alaikum dear viewers. Welcome back to the Learn Arabic show which is a brand new show on IBN. So today we'll be continuing with our third session of Arabic. Now just a recap on what we did yesterday. So yesterday we did about vowels. We learned about the short vowels and the long vowels. Then we went on to tanmeen and the definite article. We moved on to shadda, tashdeed. And then we went on to Madda and learned two sentences in Arabic. But something I want to clarify from yesterday regarding the sukun, okay? Since we come across this sign, sukun in the Quran, very often. So just a point to note from yesterday regarding the sukun, uh, which you also call jassif in English. Right, so this sign that appears in the Quran, in some Qurans it depends. You can, you have the symbol of sukun. You have the symbol like this, right? So, for example, if I want to say my book, so I'll say, I'll write down the sign as well. So I'll have katabi, and here is my sukun sign. So in some Qurans, you will find that the sukun sign is written like this. However, in other Qurans, you will find that the sukun is written differently. So I'll have katabi. But however, the pronunciation is the same. So I will have something like this. Now, this should not confuse you because since we did the vowels yesterday, we also noticed the dhamma, right? One of the vowels, the dhamma, that is the nominative. So, we did yesterday in the short vowels, short vowels, dhamma looks like, like this. Dhamma is nominative and it looks like this, right? So, this and this sukun here should have a difference. What's the difference? This thing here has a circle. This does not have any circle because it depends on the types of Quran you're reading or the types of books you're reading. Okay, so some of them look like this, uh, the sukun, and others look like a straight round. And another thing I wanted to clarify from yesterday's class was the pronunciation of tanween. So we look at the pronunciation pronunciation of tanween now tanween pronunciation is not the same as short vowel pronunciation so if i want to pronounce a short vowel it will just be like a e and u like the example we did yesterday of alif and then we had ba which is b and ta for example tu right now with the mean i said you double up everything right so if i'm going to double up everything Okay, so I'm going to have fathatain, kasratain, dhammatain, right? So this will be pronounced as an. So if I have alif with fathatain, it will be pronounced as an. If I have alif with a kasratain, it will be pronounced as in. If I have an alif with a dhammatain, it will be pronounced as un. So basically what you do is you just add the N sound, the noon sound, to make it tanween. So for example, if I have the word darsun, if I want to say class, for example, darsun, so I will have da, ra, sin. You see here the sukun, we have the sukun and we have 
the tanween. So I'll say dar sun. So it will be pronounced with an N sound in the end. Dar sun. But if I don't have tanween, so without the tanween, I'm going to pronounce it as I have dar su. Okay? without the N sound. Here we have N sound and here we do not have the noon sound at the end. Right now we will move on to our, to our today's lesson. So today's lesson will be discussing other signs in the Quran. Since before learning the actual language we need to learn all the signs so that we can understand them better. Right, so today's class will be about Hamza. Remember when I was listing the 28 letters on the very first session, I had said we have a letter called Hamza, right? So now this Hamza, we have two types of Hamza in the Quran. The first type, two types. Two types of Hamza in the Quran, we have Hamza tul Wasla. Um, Hamza tul waslati. Now remember yesterday I also said that here when you have a definite article you cannot have a tanween sign at the end that's why I've put a kasra and in further classes we will know why have I kept a kasra and not a fatha or not a dhamma. Right. So first we have Hamza tul Waslati. And then we have the second type. This is the first type. Hamzatul Wasla. The second type we have is Hamzatul Qata. Hamzatul Hamzatul Qat'i, okay? And that's how you write it in English, but I encourage you to learn how to write it in Arabic since it will be more easy for you. Right, so Hamzatul Qat'a and Hamzatul Wasla. So first we'll start with Hamzatul Qat'a because this is a bit more uh, advanced. Right, so we'll start with Hamzatul Qat'a. Now Hamzatul Qat'a are those Hamzas which are pronounced so these hamzas are pronounced and they can appear in the beginning of a word or a sentence. They can appear in the beginning, they can appear in the middle, and they can appear at the end. Right? So we will be looking at where, how do they appear at the beginning, how do they appear at the middle, and how do they appear at the end. So for example, for example, example of Hamzatul uh, Qata'a. So for example, I have the word Akala. Akala, right? And here is my Hamzatul Qata'a. So I will pronounce this Hamza. This Hamza here is pronounced. So this is an example of Hamza in the beginning of a sentence or any word or anything. So Akala means he ate. Right. So I will be pronouncing it as Akala. Now in the middle of a sentence, example one, example two, in the middle of a sentence or a word, maybe I can have Sa'ala. Okay. I have Sa'ala. So here again is my Hamzatul Qat'a. Right? So Sa'ala. So this is in the middle. Again it is pronounced. The Hamza that is pronounced. Then finally the last example, Hamza appearing at the end of a word. So I can have for example Qara'a. Okay? Qara'a al-Quran. 
चल से करा राइट सो हियर आई हैव माय हमजा हमजतुल कत्ता आई हैव माय हमजतुल कत्ता एट द एंड ऑफ द वर्ड एंड सअला मींस सअला मींस ही आस्क्ड करा मींस ही रेड Inshallah, we'll be looking at verbs in the present tense and the past tense in future classes. So, Saala means he asked, and we have the Hamza tul Qata at the middle. Qara'a means he read, and we have the Hamza tul Wasla at the end. Now, the second uh, type of Hamza we'll be looking at is Hamza tul Wasla. So, we have done Hamza tul Qata. You know what Hamza tul Qata is. If anyone asks you, it is the Hamza. You have the symbol here, and it appears in the middle, beginning, or the end, and it is pronounced in a word. Right. Now another type of hamza, which is the hamza tul wasla. Okay, the sign is not the same. Okay, it, it looks something like this. The symbol for this. Right. So the symbol, it looks like this. Right on top. Now, for example, if I have the word um, Abdul Qadir, I am reciting, and I want to read the word. So I have the word Abdul Abdul Qadir. Right. So now here on my lam on my alif here you will notice in some Qurans you will notice it that you will notice a small sign on top here if you open your Qurans anywhere you can see you notice that you have a small sign here now this sign here is actually known as hamzatul wasla so this sign here is known as hamzatul wasla now what is hamzatul wasla if someone asks you hamzatul wasla so Hamza tul wasla is the Hamza, okay, that is not pronounced. You drop it out. When it comes to pronouncing this Hamza here, you will not pronounce it. You will drop it. The alif will not be pronounced, and the Hamza, the Hamza tul wasla, will have no effect on the alif when it comes to pronunciation. So I will just simply pronounce it as Abdul Qadir. So I have, I'll pronounce it as Abdu, right? And this, this alif is not pronounced. Just Abdul, I will just start pronouncing from here. So I will have it as Abdul Qadir, right? So it will be Abdul Qadir. I will not say Abdul Qadir. Do we say Abdul Qadir? We don't say that, right? We say Abdul Qadir. Another example, uh, let's say I want to say Amirul Mu'mineen, okay, title of Imam Ali, right, so I have Amir Amirul Mu'mineen. So let's say I want to pronounce this, Amirul Mu'mineen. So we notice here that we have two types of Hamza taking place on the same word, right? So what Hamza is this? I will say Amirul, okay? So this Hamza is being pronounced. And we said, what is the type of Hamza that is being pronounced? We say the type of Hamza that is being pronounced is Hamzatul which looks like this so this will be pronounced so this is this is known as Hamzatul Qat'a why is it known as Hamzatul Qat'a because it is being pronounced and because its symbol looks like this so that's why the Hamzatul Qat'a is being pronounced here 
then Amirul. Then I have another sign here. I have a sign there on top of the Alif. And this sign is Hamzatul Wasla. So this Hamzatul was, uh, Wasla is not pronounced. So I will have, I will just say Amirul Mu'mineen. I will not say Amirul Mu'mineen. Will I say that? No. So this is Hamzatul Wasla. Right? Again, I move forward again. We have another type of Hamza there again. Right. So I say Amirul Mu'mineen. Right? So it means that this Hamza here again is being pronounced. Okay? This Hamza is being pronounced. So this Hamza will fall under the category of Qat'a. Right. So I have a Hamza Tul Qat'a being pronounced there in the beginning of a sentence. Then I have a Hamza Tul Wasla on top of the Alif which is not being pronounced. Then I have another Hamza Tul Qat'a here which is being pronounced. So in one word or in two words, in one single word, mu'minin, I can have a qat'a over here and amir, I can have another qat'a there. So in one word, I can have a wasla and a qat'a at the same time here, wasla and a qat'a, right. So, afahimtum al-an, have you understood? Right, so we can move on. So now we will move on to uh, another sign that we most commonly see, uh, which is known as, don't you see this sign mostly in the Quran? So this is known as Ta'ul ta Marbuta. You notice here again there is a definite article and I haven't kept a tanween sign, right? And this, what type of Hamza is this? We have just done this. This is Hamzatul Qat'a. Why? Because I say Ta'ul, right? So this word uh, Hamza here is being pronounced. So Ta'ul Marbuta. Now Ta'ul Marbuta denotes a feminine, alright? It denotes anything that's feminine. Denotes a noun being feminine right so today we are going to learn the things we find in the classroom i will look at um i will look at the things we find in the classroom right so for example duster duster we find a duster in the classroom right so duster is called nashafatun things we see in the classroom. So how will you say this in Arabic? Thing means shay'un. Things mean ashya. So the, so I have Ashia'u things you see Tarauna Al Ashia'u Tarauna fi in Fi Sofi. Sof means class. Right. So you notice here about in the very first session we had done about the sun letters. And what did we say about the sun letters? We said Swad was a sun letter. And we said that the definite article when you have a sun letter is not pronounced. So I will not say Al Sofi, I will say As Sofi. And the Swad here will carry a Shadda. Why? Because it is a sun letter. We had done this in our first session. I hope you remember. So Al Ashia'u, the things that are una you see fee 
in a sofi, the classroom. So things you see in the classroom. So I was saying duster. Okay. So duster in Arabic means nashafatun. Nashafatun means duster. Right? Now, I want to write in my book, but I want to make sure that, you know, if I make any mistake, it easily rubs off. So, I need to use a pencil. Right? So, pencil in Arabic is mirsamun. Pencil means mirsamun. So, along with a pencil, I also need something to rub off in case I make any mistake. So, I need an eraser. I need a mimsahatun. So, rubber or eraser is mimsahatun. Right. Now, I want to make sure, you know, I'm doing maths and I need to measure, I need to draw straight lines all the time. So, I need to use a ruler, right? I need to use a mistaratun. Very good. So, I need to use, I need to use a mistaratun. I need to use a ruler. What else do we see in the classroom? Um, we need fresh air, right? So I need to open the windows. I need to open the nafivatun. So nafivatun. Nafivatun means window. Right. Now, you see, I need to serve food for my family. My family is back home. I need to serve. So, where will I serve the food? I will serve the food on a table. I will serve the food on a minzadatun. So, I have minzadatun. Minzadatun means... table. Right. Now, the teacher in schools, where do they write on with chalk? They write on a saburatun. They write on a blackboard. So, I have saburatun with a tashdeed sign. You know what this tashdeed sign is for? We had done this yesterday. So, I'm hoping that you remember. So, we have saburatun means blackboard right so don't you notice a trend in all these words there is certain similarity you notice some similarity some trend here right what do we notice tamarbuta right in some um, words we have tamarbuta so let's say nashafatun duster here I have my tamarbuta. Another word, for example, mimsahatun. There again, I have my tamarbuta. Give me another word, mistaratun. There again, I have my tamarbuta. Another word, there, nafidatun. Nafidatun, again, I have my tamarbuta. Another word, mimvadatun. There again, I have my Tamarbuta, saburatun. There again, I have my tamarbuta. So all those uh, words that are circled, I have tamarbuta. So what does this tamarbuta denote? Okay, this tamarbuta, they denote that these words are feminine. Okay, so all these nouns go into the feminine category. This is not like English that feminine only means you know auntie, sister, daughter, okay, that also means feminine, but here we also have in Arabic certain nouns that are feminine, 
and we will also in uh, the next class we'll be looking at the classifications of this tamar buta so another classification of tamar buta will be looking at another classification of feminine sorry we'll be looking at our relationships for example auntie we have a brother we have sister but we're looking we'll be focusing on the feminine then another category another um, classification of feminine will be looking at parts of the body which are in pair those pairs like for example hands we have yadun we have rizlun we have eyes ainun so that also falls under the category of being feminine so and then we'll be looking like other words for example like ashamsun the sun al um anarun the fire as-sama'un, the sky, al-ardun, the floor, all these words, these few specific words of nature, they are also feminine. <coughs> so we'll be looking at all these other categories in the next class, but for today, just um, you should know these words, and then you will have a question about uh, this word here, pencil, right, I've written Mirsamun and it does not have a it does not have a tamar buta. So it means that Mirsamun is not feminine word. Mirsamun pencil is not a feminine word. Why? Because it does not have a tamar buta. So any word kitabun, mirsamun, uh, you have babun, okay? All those words, all those nouns, they are not feminine. Why? Because they do not carry a Tamar Buta. So we'll just go through these words again. Nashafatun means duster. Mirsamun, which is not a feminine word, it means pencil. Mimsahatun, Mimsahatun means eraser. Mistoratun, Mistoratun means ruler. You know, we say in Quran, Surat al Mustaqim, Surat. Surat means straight path. So Mistoratun. It comes from the word sirat, mistoratun sirat. Mistoratun means ruler, where right? I can draw something straight, right? So nafidatun, nafidatun means window. Min vadatun, min vadatun means table. Then I have saburatun means blackboard. And there are some words in Arabic you will find that they have similarity with Kiswahili. For example, I want to say the word pen. You see, I'm using a pen. So pen in Arabic means, so I have qalamun. Qalamun means pen. So now we have two words here that are not feminine. We have qalamun, which means pen. You know, in Kiswahili we say kalamu. In Arabic we say qalamun. So there is a bit of a similarity. So we have qalamun. So two words here which are not feminine and which are masculine, we have qalamun and we have mirsamun. Otherwise, the rest of the words here, carrying a tamar buta, they are all feminine. So inshallah, this is all for today's session. We'll be meeting um, tomorrow inshallah. Sanastamiru ghadan. Inshallah. Thank you for listening.